legible as I'll actually I'll lift it up because it's graphite so sometimes it can go shiny see like this so if I lift it up like that you can actually see the full-blown darkness of the graphite layers hi I'm Layla welcome back to my channel today we are going to have another one of those slow and relaxing videos so if you've come home after a busy day of work and would like to relax while drawing you definitely found the right video in this video i will show you how to draw a scorpio step by step using graphite pencils and some white paper here are all the materials that you might need so i hope you guys get to relax and enjoy or you can always follow along and hopefully create the same work by the end of this video but whatever you decide to do i hope you enjoy it i will be using graphite pencils and erasers as well so i will be using a putty rubber and this mechanical i call it pencil rubber and few different pencils you want to make sure that you've got something quite dark you know so that you can um see i'll be using 9b so that you can go full strength um, into your shades and also um, you want something fine for when it's time to do little details and things like that i will start with this pencil this is 4b so anything around 2b 4b um, should be fine so let's start with the structure of the actual scorpion so first we've got the biggest part which is the body then we've got the tail so we can also put a line through because the tail kind of follows that line the central line for a little bit and then the tail curves and now it's much easier to build things up it's probably not extremely visible guys for you now because camera has hard time catching all of the weak soft lines but i do suggest that if you are working on this at home if you are following along make sure that you don't press too hard at this stage because later you might have real hard time getting rid of your lines next i'm going to place the legs and the nippers and everything so also here on the head we've got a little big part the two bumps you might say that i'm going into too much detail at this stage because i do like to have everything placed out first but really this area would help me to place the legs appropriately because i'm going to be placing legs by comparing which section on the body it is okay so now i've got the overall markings on the body now i'm going to look um, at where these legs are joined to the body so i've got these little parts i can place them there because they're right there next what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a central line for each leg for each claw whatever these things are called as on the front so each little joint gets its own little almost like if you imagine there's a bone inside each one of those that's kind of what you are marking Okay, so now that I have this almost like a, a robotic um, arms for this little guy, let's give him some, some more structure. And we can look over these areas as well now. Okay, so now this is marked. Next, I'm going to go for the next legs, and there's about four of them. So let's have a look. The next lot that comes out from both sides 
comes out from somewhere just there, just underneath those bumps. And remember, because of what is, is, is called foreshortening, when something is in a different um, situation to you, like for example, if you're looking at my finger, it's, you know, how long it is, but as soon as I do this, it looks shorter. So this is what's called foreshortening in art. So some of the legs might appear shorter because they are being bent. The next lot of legs comes straight from... So these are the first lot, this is the second one straight from here. And then the third lot. And you see how once you've, once you've placed some, it's much easier to place the other ones. And then the last two. And same on the other side. If you are enjoying this video, please remember to go over to the Patreon page and check some extra videos there. There are lots of videos on different drawing, painting techniques, also very relaxing videos, um, you know, almost whisper videos. So whatever you are into, you will probably find something there that you would really enjoy. So don't forget to check it out. And while you'll be watching all those videos over there, you will be supporting this channel here as well. So now again, I've got kind of like a skeleton for these legs. And now I'm going to work over and add more detail, give them thickness and so on. So let's have a look. There's a little bump here, then there's that joint. Then there's a bone there. So you see, once you break it down into little sections and you do central lines for them, it becomes so much more easier to put everything together because when you look at all of these little bits and pieces it's it can be quite hard to sort of uh, even realize where you put it and then you put it and it's in the wrong place so doing little structures like this really helps and really saves time as well even though at first you might think oh but can't you just draw a leg straight away you know so it's quite it'll really help if you go through with this Now, let's have a look at the tail. So the tail sort of comes down, and then we've got that that add last segment there. It looks kind of like a triangle, so make sure you keep it like that. And then there's almost like a little tiny triangle in that big one. Also, if you look at all the sections, it, they kind of look like, you know, like a like hair that's been plaited. That's how you know the little segments that the tail consists of. So we've got one, two, three, four full sections and then the longer ones. So one, two, three, four. And then we've got the longer section and then we have the little section with the nipper, with a stinger, whatever, whatever it's called on scorpions. So now that I've pretty much got the whole picture of the actual Scorpio, no shadows, no nothing, but I've got the basic overall shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the things that I don't need, that are just getting in the way, you know, structural things. And we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so what I've done so far with camera, so that I won't take any of your time, is that I've cleaned up all of the unneeded pencil lines, you know, all the structure lines that I didn't need. And I also went over the outlines a little bit more. Now, if you are following along, you don't need to do that. I've done it because I know that camera doesn't capture those faint lines very well. So I went over them for you guys so you can see better. But as I said, don't worry about doing this because if you can see your lines at home, that's per perfectly fine. In fact, if they are very strong, 
I would even suggest to sort of softly brush over them like that to get rid of the really strong one. And now you can just have your Scorpio setting like that, sort of a little bit more abstract, like just the Scorpio on the white. But I will put on the shadow just to make it look a little bit more 3D, to make it pop up a little bit more from the page. So for that I'm going to mark the shadows through and then later we'll be able to shade them in. Now this is the one where you really want to go very soft because most of the shadows go a little bit softer towards the line, not harder. So you don't want a very strong line that you would need to battle against later on and use a lot of eraser on it. Also guys, the sketch of the Scorpio without the shadow, I'm going to put a photograph of it on my Patreon. So, so those of you who are patrons would be able to just, you know, you can print it out, or you can just have a look at it because it is quite complicated. So you could use that as a guide if you're drawing and having trouble. So that would be available on Patreon by the time that I will release this video. I will correct the shape of these shadows a bit more later on but for now I'm just marking where they are so that I've got the whole composition worked out at least in line all well, this area is in shadow too and this here right by the body So there, now I've got the whole shadow and what I want to do next is to start shading. Now there are two ways to start your shading and when way number one is what I usually say is better um, and that's going over the whole thing and then making things darker and lighter as you're working over the whole thing. Way number two is to start working and almost finishing say a specific area then moving into another area another area and so on usually that second way is not suitable this is probably um, the work that you could use it on it's especially useful when you are how should i say it working on something that's extremely smudgeable because if you've got everything everywhere and then you put your hand in there and you smudge everything so the best way to work on this is really to start working on one part, then once that's done, you move into another and you move in the direction. Say if you're right-handed, you start from the left top corner and move down to the bottom right corner. If you're left-handed, then the opposite way, you would start with the right top corner and then move towards the bottom left corner. Up to you what you want to go for please feel free to do that. I'll sort of do a little bit of, um, I think, working more in one section, but I will work across as well. So I'll kind of do a mix of the two. I'm gonna grab this pencil. Now the only reason that I'm switching to this one, this one's 6B, is because it's got a wider um, lead in it, so I can use it sideways and cover quite a large area. This Scorpio is quite dark. It's almost black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over with a reasonably light shade. It doesn't have to be too light, just somewhat light. And I will add more shadows and more highlights later on. So this is the shade I want to go with first. Another thing, um, if you are working on the whole thing and you don't want to smudge, you can use a piece of paper to place under your arm 
Now you can just use another piece of paper like this, for example, or you can use paper like this. The beauty of this paper is that you can still see through it. So when you're working on this, your eye, um, you can keep an eye on this at the same time. So this way I can rest my hand here without worrying too much. At this stage you can use any technique you want for shading, it doesn't have to be anything because we will be using smudge sticks to soften everything up. And you carry on like this until the whole body is covered. The next step is to use a smudge stick and to go over it. Remember, don't worry about details. This is the preliminary shading. You're just building up your color before you need to get into any detail. Just like that, softly. Remember, it's not so much about how hard you press, but more about how many times you go over. So when you're using these smudge sticks make sure that you don't press too hard because if you go too hard you can even in some cases damage the paper depending on what kind of paper you're using i'm going only over the body of the scorpion i'm not going over the shadows shadows would be done i've marked them and i'm going to leave them i'll do them when the Scorpio itself is finished. If you're getting a little bit outside of your lines, you can do two things. Number one, you can use a smaller smudge stick or you can just tidy things up once we're done. Next, I'm going to go over everything now and I'm going to be paying more attention to the specific areas that I'm working on. Okay, so now let's get more into shading and create those much darker areas. Also pay attention to some of the outlines because some of them are quite sharp and quite smooth but some are a little bit bumpy and sort of have that look to them so you need to make sure that you follow those as well. Always pay attention to your reference because there might be little bumps and twists and things that you might need to pay attention to. So make sure you always look at your image or if you're lucky enough to be drawing a real Scorpio that's sitting posing for you, <laughs> that would be fun, but unfortunately I don't have that possibility. So I'm just drawing it from the image. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the side here and do exactly the same thing. So add the shadows where they have to be darker. Now, because this, you know, creature that I'm working on here is really, really dark, I don't really need to worry about, you know, pencil marks or anything because I know it's going to be even darker. But there is um, a video that I have on my channel about different um, mark making techniques. So, you, you know, depending on how you prefer to work with the cross hatching, stippling and so on. So you can watch that video if you're interested. Some of the areas are really, really dark, so make sure you go over them a few times. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, 
is I'm not going to carry on all the way through because I'm just worried I'm going to be smudging way too much as you know this goes into detail so I'm just going to work on this part and then slowly I will move on to this one and then this one that way there will be less smudging going on because even when you use the paper you still smudge a little bit um, so it's, it's better sometimes to work in sections especially when we're going as dark and as you know the graphite is as dense as we have here so now I am going to smudge again And now I'm going to use a party rubber to pick up some of that pencil from the lighter areas. Especially areas like these top um, sort of nippers where there's a little bit of texture going on. The beauty of this eraser is that you can shape it into any shape you want and it picks up graphite without leaving any little bits or anything like this if you're interested to find out more about materials please have a look i do have a video an overview on all of the graphite pencils and rubbers and all that so you can find that video on my channel next i'm gonna go in with a finer pencil and get into more and more details and this is the stage where you have to pay, start paying attention to little tiny things. This is when they will make the difference. That area is just a little bit bumpy. If you don't have a mechanical pencil, they're not expensive and they're easy to find. But if you don't have one on hand and you want to follow along, you can always just use your regular pencil. Just make sure you constantly sharpen it. Because of the texture, this highlight is not very regular. It sort of has a good bit of texture going. So this is what we're doing now. Quite a sharp little point there. And few little spikes on the side here drawing this it really reminds me of crayfish and now i'm just going to do the same thing on the other side okay so now i've done the same thing on this side and i'm working on this area here so i've done this leg now i will show you how i'm going to do this leg pretty much all the same stuff that i did here going over some details checking out the textures if something's popping out somewhere if something's a little bit darker, you put all those things in. I won't bother with the little hairs and things like that. I will do this later, once I've already done quite a bit more. Oh, I'll go back to that a bit later. Okay. So next, I'm going to go in with this little rubber and pick out some of the stronger highlights now this is especially good for um doing little textures and things like that so anything anywhere that is either naturally colored lighter because even though it's quite a dark scorpio there's still some parts that are naturally lighter or anywhere where you have you know, highlights and light reflections. You can pick them up with this eraser. And now the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now that I've gone over all of the, um, you know, that sort of area, see this one's still not done, this one's just got the preliminary formula, I'm actually going to go over it with the darkest pencil, the softest pencil that I have, which is a 9B. This is for 
the darkest areas again not working on the shadow I've marked the shadows down just working on the Scorpio itself and if there is texture remember that you can sort of uh, do two things at the same time you can shade and add texture at the same time like this So this is done, but the this side is not done. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over it with a smudge stick, but this time I'm going to use a very thin one, just because, you know, when you use a very soft pencil, it, it's so much easier to just smudge uncontrollably. So now I'm going to use this little one and only apply it in some areas. Okay, so now that this part is done, you can see just how smudgeable this is. I'll actually, I'll lift it up because it's graphite, so sometimes it can go shiny, see like this. So if I lift it up like that, you can actually see the full-blown darkness of the graphite layers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a little bit of that shadow here. So then I don't need to go back in here when I finish this. Now I'm going to go for the small details because those bumps that you can see on the actual Scorpio, you can see those bumps in the shadow as well. And for that I need something a little bit finer, like this. Now, you know how we do highlights on the actual um, subject? We need to go and we need to tidy up the shadow. A lot of people think that this is not a necessary step. And if you are working in quite a rough manner, so you applying a lot of, you know, lines and you don't care about the details, then that's probably fine. But on something like this, because we're going for such a such a detailed, very dense um, artwork, almost photorealism, you can say. We need to tidy up the shadows too. And all of that smudging that happened somewhere where you didn't want it to happen, all of that can come off now as well. Also, any of the reflections that happen just on the actual subject, on the side of the shadow, you can work on that too. And here I'm just brightening some more highlights on the actual Scorpio. Now let's have a look. This is almost finished. There are probably little bits and pieces that I would like to add, but first I need to work over this area here. So I'm going to just do this part and I'm going to go from this side to this side just because I am right-handed. So pretty much the same thing. I would probably need to work even a little bit less in detail in terms of this because they're in the present with a lot of texture. Here we don't have as much of the fine texture, just the little hairs which we will add at the end.
So everything that I can see that is darker, I'm just going over it um, a bit more intensely. Anything that I see that's lighter, I'm just leaving it lighter. Now these sections here on the back, they're really hard to make out. The only thing that does indicate that they're there, pretty much those highlights that are being captured by just like right there in the center, some of, some of the areas of that highlight are a bit lighter. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using an eraser to bring those out, but for now we're just creating some of those shadows. And as they go down, they sort of become wider and wider a little bit. And it pretty much doesn't have a highlight. Smudge stick time. Now, butter over time. Lifting up some of the graphite there and there, and especially. Here. Just remember with Pachiraba you can't get the brightest highlights, so this is sort of a semi soft, I guess. Okay, so we've got all of them. There's not much of a highlight there. Now let's look at the legs. this wider little um, area section of the leg seems to be a little bit lighter in the middle and a bit darker towards the side so that's exactly why I'm going over it with a putty rubber like that in the center next I'm going to go over this area with a fine pencil Now just a little bit more of the smudge stick and a fine little rubber to bring out some of the highlights. And now let's not forget some highlights over here. So now I'm gonna go for the shadows on the um, on the side here, and then we'll move on to that part too. And now, just like before, tidying up the shadows. Okay, I'm gonna leave that side for now. I will have to come back to it a bit later so that I can add just a little bit more of those little tiny hairs and things. Okay, now let's work on this side. I'm going to go over the whole thing again, the same as I did on that side. Um, shadows, smudging, more shadows, highlights with the razor and then we can go back onto it. So as you can see, I've done that side as well. 
just a little bit of some of the darker areas now that are left here to do and I'm actually going to start working on the tail okay so the tail consists of these segments so we can also work on all segments separately or you can work on all of them um, together so that's up to you whatever you prefer so let's start with this part the bottom of the belly or the back whatever you want to call it the other side of the belly um, and of course we've got some highlights and some shadows oops wrong pencil I still need to go with this one first and they're kind of like um, a plate you know that you make out of here um, or maybe like hearts like a row of hearts kind of if you look at it so and these areas here are just a little bit darker on the bottom and then we've got few highlights especially over here these are the highlighted areas but these are the darkest areas here just on the bottom of each sort of a heart each section now because this section is a little bit sideways it sort of changes a little bit because you can see the other side of it and same with this one as well so here we've got this section and then this section here and then the joining section area and the actual little end bit of the tail with the stinger next I'm just gonna go over with a smudge stick and give it a quick little smudge and then with a putty eraser bring a little bit more light into some of the areas and the tail is quite dark overall just some highlights really and now the strong little pencil eraser there's quite a bit of texture going on on that side here yeah. and now I'm going to go in with a fine pencil and add some more refined details and remember if you create very strong highlights and you don't want them that strong you can either grab a smudge stick and go over them or you can just go over them with a pencil lightly and make them a little bit darker and to go over with an eraser Okay, now at this stage we can say that this is finished but not quite I want to take it in the next step now by this stage you can say that this is finished but not quite I still want to add some of the finer finer details so things like a little sort of hairs and little extra shadows like an extra little shadow here to make it darker because remember when we work on the composition everything changes so things that we've done in the beginning might not look the same now that we've finished that's why ideally you want to be really working on everything at the same time okay so those fine little things that 
kind of stick out here and there like there are a few little hairs there and there there are a few little things that are just sticking out here and here um, what else can I see that's quite interesting that we can put in um, some little things that are sticking out here too and in fact we can see them on the shadow as well so I'm gonna add them there as well this part here of the leg has quite a bit of a fluff going each way on the, and these bottom parts they are really furry if you look at them they just on the tail um, I don't know if it's fur or just little spikes maybe but it's quite short so I'll just put it as little dots and some long ones around the tail you know that section where the spike is and it's even visible on the shadow now my last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the little shadow spikes and just soften them a bit to make them merge with the shadow a bit more And that's it. But it's obviously quite an interesting subject to work on, you know, just because it's, you know, scorpions and poison and, you know, the stingers and all that. So it's quite an interesting art, very commonly used for tattoos and things like that. Um, I guess there's also the star sign at Scorpio, so maybe that's why it's quite common for tattoos as well. But yeah, just um, let me know in the comments, please, what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got to follow along and completed an artwork. Or maybe you just decided to watch it, relax, and pick up some tips, tricks along the way to enhance your own drawings i would also like to take this chance to say big big huge thank you to my wonderful wonderful patrons who are making these videos possible if you're not on patreon make sure you go over there and check it out you might find something very useful for yourself over there i also hope you have a wonderful day or night and as always, thank you so much for drawing with me.